In this video, we're going to be working on the HP Spectre X360. We get at least a couple of them every single day. Every single day, at least a couple of them. It looks something like this. And customer brought this in, or customer mailed this in. Is it local or mailing? It's local. Customer brought this in because laptop does not power on. It does not charge, does not show the orange light on the side, and it does not power on. I know these laptops inside out because I work on them every single day. Of course, no circuit diagram or board diagrams available for this laptop, but because I spent a lot of time working on them, I figured out a lot of things on how to fix those laptops. Everyone is different. Every laptop is different. So I'm interested in looking at a couple of things quick. Let's do a quick physical inspection. The big power I see here, I did a couple of videos where we had a bad chip and we measured a short around that chip. So since we're doing physical inspection, why not measure at the same time? Meter in diode mode and let me just measure around that chip to see if we have a short. And we do not. We do not. We do not. So things are looking good here. Good. We do not have a short around that chip. Let's continue with physical inspection. Now that board is still inside the laptop. We did not take that board out. But if I feel like we have to, then we'll take that board out. And this is just dirt. It's nothing to be concerned about. I see this a lot on a lot of the HP Spectre laptops. And while at it, why don't we measure this diode here? Right now we have two USB-C power ICs on the board here. One, oh, 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 look at this, look at this. Blown, blown, look at the smoke. One of the USB-C ports has a blown chip. This chip most likely affected this one also. Right now we do not have a short on this diode. Let's test the other diode. And we have a short here on this diode. And that's most likely because of this blown chip. The good thing is we have most of the parts for this particular laptop and we have a lot of donor boards since I work on them every day. So let me just remove that drive while at it. All right, so the drive is out. And let's continue physical inspection. We have a Wi-Fi card down here, but we're gonna keep it. It's far away from the chips. And I think for the most part, the board looks good. And like I said, we have two chips here, one for each of the USB-C ports that we have on this laptop. And the way I figured this out is because at one point when we first started to get those laptops in, I would look at the board under a thermal cam. When I plug the cable using the first USB-C port and I monitor the board under a thermal cam, I see that this chip gets hot. I switch the cable, I plug it in the second USB-C port because we have two here. And I monitor the board under a thermal cam and I see that the other chip got hot. So I knew that this chip controls this USB-C port and that chip controls that USB-C port. So whatever I know on this board and whatever fixes I do on that board, it's not because there is a reference or schematic or board diagram that I looked at to learn how to do this, but because of spending a lot of time working on that board. Anything can be fixed if you want to spend enough time working on that device. But we have to balance. Is it worth it working on this device? Is it worth it spending the time to work on that device? It's all about how much time you want to spend on that device. It's neither practical or economical to spend hours and hours and hours working on one board or one device. Those hours that I invested trying to figure out 
how those laptops work or how the motherboard work paid off. Because right now, almost 85% of HP spec laptops are fixable. So let's proceed with this repair and see if we are able to fix this laptop. We're going to replace both ICs. And I want to use some aluminum tape to cover. And of course, we do not want to heat up the board while the screen is closed. I mean, heat is not going to penetrate and damage the screen, but still, to be on the safe side, we're going to work on it like this. So we always have to be safe when working on customers' devices. Let's start with the first one here, or the second one, or however you want to go at this. Fume extractor on, and let's do it. So now that both ICs are out, let me quickly test this diode and see if we have a short here. We may have to replace the diode if it's bad. And the short is gone. We no longer have a short and our diode reading is 0.5. We no longer have a short on this diode. And what about this one? Same thing, 0.512. One more time. 0.549. Perfect. Let's go ahead and clean. We still have unleaded solder on the board, so we're going to have to mix leaded with unleaded solder. And we're going to wick off those pads with a wick. The pads on this board are tough, so we do not need to use hot tweezers and a wick. We can just apply our soldering iron to that wick to clean off the solder. Get rid of the glare. I mean, I promised myself that I would drink this tea while it's still hot because every time it gets cold. Semi hot. Okay. <clears throat> We want to make sure that all the pads are able to catch solder because some of the pads may be dull and solder does not stick onto them so we have to scratch them, clean them, like look, you see we have a couple of pads here that cannot accept solder. So we have to make sure that every single pad is able to take solder. Look at this. What do we do in this case? We use our fine steel brush. Just remove any oxidation. And whatever I'm using here, whether it's a wig, flux, the brush, can be purchased off our site. We had one person leave us a negative review on Yelp and he stated that we sell fake Amtec flux. We are one of the major resellers of Amtec Flux. We are actually one of the biggest resellers of Amtec Flux. And I always mention it in a lot of our videos. What we do is we use our own syringes. And the reason for that is so we can provide you with a free plunger because Amtec Flux does not come with a plunger. You have to buy it as a separate item. So we give you our own syringe. We empty Amtec Flux in our own syringe so we can give you a free plunger and we can give you free needles. We use the freshest Amtec Flux in the market and you cannot confuse Amtec Flux with any other Flux. Amtec is almost always clear or almost clear. You can immediately tell if that's Amtec Flux or not Amtec Flux. That's how we get our Amtec Flux, like this. And if you notice, the Flux does not come with a plunger or needles. So we either get a plunger from Amtec and sell it to the user for two or three dollars because the syringe comes like this no plunger and the thing is we cannot use this plunger 
and add it on here because the diameter of Amtex syringe is different than this one. They have their own special diameter measurement on their syringe. It does not match this one. So what we do is we empty this and this so we can give you a plunger and also two size needles. So this is Amtec. I did not reply to that user. It goes to show that you cannot trust every negative review that you read. 70% of negative reviews that we have on Yelp, I do not know who those people are, 70%. I mean, nobody uses Yelp, but still, 70% of reviews that we have on Yelp are either from people we do not know, they are fake reviews, or they are bogus reviews. Like for example, we got the customer in, he wanna buy an iPhone 8 Plus LCD. We do not sell parts, we do not sell LCDs for iPhone 8 Plus, we do not sell screens for any device. And the reason for that is, somebody without any experience will buy that screen, they'll go home, try to assemble it, they will damage the screen, and they'll come back to you and tell you the screen is not good. The screen is not good, not because the screen itself is not good, but because the person who has no knowledge that tried to install the screen, damaged that screen. So we never at any point in time offer to sell parts or screens for any device. What does the customer do? He goes online and writes a review. And you see a lot of them like that. Or a customer called in, we gave him a price, he did not like the price and he left a review. So let's continue working on this. Remove any oxidation. And this is fine steel brush. Steel on this brush is not hard, so it's not gonna damage the masking on the board or the mask on the board. Apply more flux, apply more flux. We're gonna add leaded solder again, just like that. Solder is not sticking here and or here. Let's go ahead and do this one. Very nice. But this one needs more work. Actually, it's good now. Okay, so we're gonna apply a little bit of flux and we're gonna wake off solder and clean those pads then we can solder our new chips and look at how dense this wick is And the board looks disgusting, but no need to fear. Eye is here. I see one tiny one here. And we're good. All we have to do is apply flux and solder our chips. Let's apply a little bit of flux here. And we're going to spread the flux. Okay, and that's the chip right here. It's already rebuilt. And pin number one is that dot right here. And it has to align with the dot on top, like this. And look at how HP decided to put a mark on the board to let you know how that chip should align. It's not something that you see on Apple products. And we're gonna apply heat. Maybe seven to 10 seconds until that chip 
makes a solid connection with the board. And I burned three of my fingers, but that's okay. That's why we have ten fingers. All right, now we're gonna let that chip reflow. And the chip is soldered on perfectly. Now we're gonna do the same thing here to the other one. The board is still hot, so flux spreads quick. And that's how Amtec flux should look like, clear. It may not be 100% clear, but that's how it should look like. And let's do this one. Just wait until solder hardens. The chip is solid. Now we're gonna reflow that chip. Chip went back in place, tap, it pulls back. Okay, that's it. The job is done. Right, so let's put that hard drive back so we do not lose it or lose the screw. And we'll test. Right, and I have the charger right here. Let's hope that what we did fixed the problem. Because even though we do this every day, it doesn't always turn out the way you want. And something else may be wrong. Right now, based on the physical inspection that we did and the chips that we replaced, we got rid of the diode short and we replaced both USB-C ICs. The laptop should work. All right, and yes. Yes. We have an orange light. And let's see. I do not know if the battery I do not know if the battery is completely drained. Yes, right there. <laughs> okay, the screen is dim because the battery is very low. Let's try this one more time. Okay, I think we have to wait for the battery to charge up a bit. The battery is dead. It's currently being charged, so it may take 10, 15 minutes to hold up charge, but the laptop is working. The laptop is working. That's it, we're gonna end it right here. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions and we'll do something else in the next video. Mm -hmm.